in the city of Toronto. Now, earlier this month, Uber announced that Toronto would be its first hub outside of the U.S. for driverless car technology. So now, Google getting in on the action with its parent company, Alphabet, applying to transform a strip of the city into what they're calling a high-tech district. Toronto is also developing the Waterfront Innovation Centre, a $150 million project to attract top tech businesses and talent from all over the world. Joining us to discuss is Richard Florida, professor at the University of Toronto and author of the book, The New Urban Crisis. Good to have you with us Great this morning. To be here. Let's talk about tech innovation and Toronto all in one sentence. What is happening? Well, you know, Toronto is poised. It's really at this tipping point for the next big thing. You know, technology used to be in suburban office parks. We call them nerdist stands, where the nerdy engineers used to like to park their fancy cars. Mm -hmm. Now technology is moving back to big cities. It moved from the Silicon Valley into San Francisco. New York City has $3 billion in startup investment a year, London. So Toronto, with its great location, with all that property on the waterfront, Great universities is poised for this next round. Oh, we know that Waterloo, Kitchener, that region has really been sort of the tech hub of Canada, fair to say, mm -hmm. for the last little while. Is this sort of a replacement? Is this in conjunction with? How would this operate? I think they go together. You yeah. know, they're kind of like, uh, you know, two pieces of a puzzle that fit together. And they're, aside from the traffic, <laughs> they're pretty close mileage-wise. But the interesting thing is when you look at the startup companies, more startup companies attracting that venture capital investment are in Toronto than Kitchener-Waterloo. So they really go together. And then you take the University of Toronto, where I teach, with this fabulous computer science department, which is a big lure, and you combine that with engineering at Waterloo. Really, you have something that could compete with any tech region in the world uh, for investment and for the future. And so if Toronto becomes this tech hub, does that help other Canadian cities? Well, I think we have a number of tech hubs. Vancouver, clearly, with its location, now, you've got to factor what's happening in the States, and you know I'm American. Mm -hmm. uh, Trump's election and these clampdown on immigration restrictions is really causing tech companies to look for where can we get the best global talent. Vancouver is a place that tech companies like Microsoft have invested to attract global talent close to Seattle, close to the West Coast, and Toronto. Montreal has a big tech sector. So I think it's, it's, it's at least the three big tech hubs in, in Canada, mm -hmm. maybe more. Okay, what do we know about Alphabet's bid? Like, I know we don't know too much at this point, uh, but what do you know about this vision that they have? We don't know that much because this is all under wraps. Right. Um, we know that Toronto is interesting to Alphabet, and it's interesting to a whole variety of other tech companies. I mean, I think what could happen on the waterfront, you know, with those 1,000-plus acres, it's really the ability to create a city within a city. You could imagine really building not only a development, a real estate development, but a tech city of the future, driverless cars, sensor technology, but doing it in a way that it becomes a center for urban innovation. What works best? How do people want to live in this new world? Do they want to live in small apartments, big apartments? How do they want to work? Do they want to have their own offices? Do they want to work in some version of a new kind of coffee shop. See, so that's, that's what, what I wonder. happen there. Because I wonder, because, you know, there's been such pushback in Toronto with what to do with this waterfront. You know, there's this uh, lots of vacant land, and what do we do? Do we build up? Do we build back? Do we, you know, preserve the environment there? How do you see this uh, playing out? Well, you know, I've heard all the complaints. We've been here for 10 years. I actually think our moving slow helped us. Mm. It really comes at a perfect time with, with Trump in office and with this idea that companies are looking for great global cities with great airports and great universities. So now's the time, and I think we should go slow, and I think we should use it as a laboratory, because we don't know. I mean, honestly, and I teach in this area of urbanism, yeah. we don't know exactly how people want to live, how much they want to drive. So make it a laboratory where great companies and great community actors can test out new ideas for living and working and playing in, in our world today. Okay, so high-tech jobs usually have high salaries, I would assume, right? Yes, very uh, high. Okay, so if we're attracting all of these uh, people working here in the... Toronto Tech Hub with these high salaries. What does that do? I mean, we're obviously dealing with uh, interesting real estate prices right now. That's already way up there. But what about the middle and lower classes? Um, what Does that push them out of well, the downtown core? This is what I call the new urban crisis. It's mm. not a crisis of urban failure and dysfunction. It's a crisis of success. So the more success you have, the more housing prices go up, the more pressure is on your transit system. I think Toronto has to be really proactive here. And, and you can see it. You can see the mayor taking action. You can see the prime minister taking action. You can see in this the, the premier taking action. We really have to focus on inclusive innovation, inclusive technology, inclusive prosperity. And we've got to push the bottom up. You know, our middle class has faded in Toronto, mm -hmm. went from 70 or 70% 70 of our population to less than a third. 
So we've got to rebuild the middle class. We've got to turn, we've got to tell the tech companies when they come here, it's not just enough to create good high-end tech jobs for the knowledge workers. You know, when you're, when you're creating those service workers, those coffee shops, the support businesses, those have to be good jobs too. Those have to be the new middle class jobs. And I think with all we have to offer, mm -hmm. Uh, they can throw in on that too. It'll be really interesting to see how this develops. And that's what I think our next point is. How do we do this in a way that's inclusive and benefits all Torontonians, not just the privileged few? And just like the Torontonians, we'll talk about it for a long time. <laughs> yeah, I think this one we're going to do. Okay. I think there's no way around it. We've just got to plan for that, the problems that come with our success. Yeah, Richard Florida, thanks so much for joining us.